Oh, my goodness. How quickly God proves. <laughs> How quickly God proves that what I have said is true. There are people who, who practice witchcraft in church. And <laughs> I'm laughing because they are under the impression that I'm not even a pastor. <laughs> uh, they have no idea. They have no idea of how accepted I am with pastors and how accepted I am within churches. I'm invited to go and preach as a prophet. Uh, I won't go as a pastor because I don't pastor a church anymore. anymore. Although I, I do pastor a lot of people, but I don't anymore do it in a physical church. So <laughs> I'm laughing because I remember vividly a young woman who was pastoring a church and she believed with all her heart that she could come directly into the home, into the bedroom, into any part of everybody's home. This is witchcraft, I'm telling you, she practiced. She, she believed she could figure you out for God was going to show her everything about you. And I laugh. And I laughed at that lie because it could not. It was in her evil imagination. And God proved it was. Because you know what happened to her? I didn't touch her. I did not tell her off. I did not rebuke her. I did not preach against her. I didn't do one thing. She was a pastor. Now, she was a pastor that told me that she knew that God had to overshadow me in order for me to write my book. She knew that was the only way that God could ever deliver such a message to anybody. Now, that was when she had not given herself up to believing she knew everything because she was a pastor. Just like some believe they know everything because, well, they read this book on demons and then read, they read this book on how to pastor, how to pray, how to do all this. They read these, these books and that's what she did. That's, she was a scholar. She studied why she, she went to uh, Bible college and she knew everything. It wasn't funny after a while when I saw what happened to her because it was tragic. But while she thought she was in power, while she thought she could come against me face to face, while she thought that she was going to be able to rebuke God in me, To me, it was funny because I knew she couldn't. And I knew that whatever she had was in her evil imagination, which is exactly what I've been talking about. Now, these people, when they pray, they pray first to Satan. Oh, they don't, they use the name of Jesus Christ. They use the, what they believe is the power of God and his presence. And I'm not even telling you that God is not there, and I'll tell you why. Because God stands strong delusion. So I'm not going to tell you they were believing Satan. I'm not going to tell you that that they were listening to Satan. I'm not going to tell you none of that. I am going to tell you that witches in church work, control, and manipulation. Now this particular woman came out of the occult and she felt that she had an inside power 
into spirits, into being able to uh, be a prophet when she felt like it. She could see everything about you. <laughs> Makes me kind of like laugh because if people could see everything about me, they would know that I'm a pastor too. But I just don't pastor anymore. I'm 80. And I'm, I'm not out for pastoring. That's why I speak here to reach the young, to reach those that have a need. The saddest part about this is these people are, number one, really sincere. Number two, they really believe with all their heart that God is with them. But they are sincerely deceived into believing that God is going to give them insight to every man's heart. And they work their iniquity and their witchcraft against God's children. Oh, I'm not saying me. They can't hurt me. None of them can touch me. That don't bother me. I'm not concerned about myself. What I'm concerned about is someone who's sincerely looking for God and they get entangled with these women. I, I saw about, oh, maybe three or four of them in the spirit that really believed with all their heart that God was going to prove that they know what they're talking about. <laughs> I'm still laughing. Oh, it's a tragedy. Really, it's a tragedy. I'm laughing because the enemy is a liar. He thinks he can outsmart God. He thinks he can raise up someone and you are going to prove that this person is not of God. I'm sure these people have attacked other real Christians. And I'm sure that they tangle some of you up. Now, I was talking, uh, when I talk, I talk to no specific person. Even now, <laughs> there's so many of you that are doing these wrong things. So um, um, so if you say, she's targeting me, she, she says, what can I do? Have at it, because I'm not doing that. There are too many out there for me to care about what you think and feel. And for, for me to target one particular person, or even three, or ten, twenty, a thousand, it don't matter. If one makes you their target and they are out to prove that you don't have God because you're not even a quote and unquote pastor, you are a false teacher, have had it. I've told all of you, go wherever you believe God wants you to go. I'm not going to judge you on it. I'm not going to condemn you on it, but I am going to warn you. There is a form of witchcraft that has worked in the church where people believe that they have insight into other people's minds and heart that are truly holy. And you can't touch them. Because once you reach out and touch them, you are working witchcraft. That's why God says, touch not mine anointed. Do them no harm. Because when you reach out and touch people, because you think you studied this book and this, you studied the things of Satan in order to know that Satan has this demon that does this and he has that demon. And you study how he does it. You studied him. You didn't study God. You studied him. And then you took and studied doctrine studied how he's, again you didn't study God you didn't go before God and ask God you went upon the opinions and understanding of books that men wrote you didn't go to Jesus Christ you didn't get all your answers from him you didn't go directly to him and you wound up with little or no power and I'm telling you, what little here's what he says. What little you have, you're going to lose. 
because you cannot play with God. You cannot pull down God. You can't deliver God up to Satan. You can't talk against God. You can't prove that you know better than God in someone's life. If I don't have God, oh, you're safe. No worries, no problems. You don't have a thing to concern yourself about. But if I have God and to help you because I care about what happens to you and I tell the truth and you take that and you twist it up and manipulate it the way you want it, I have nothing to do with that. I didn't do it. The only thing I can do is is uh, is try to warn you and tell you this. Go into the Word of God and study Jesus Christ and see about His love and His compassion that overrode everything that the scribes and Pharisees knew and understood, that the scholars understood. Go find out about him. Go find out and, and, and question yourself. And do what the disciples did. Lord, am I doing this? Instead of saying, there's no way I know. This. Uh, do you know? You don't have a chance like that. You don't have a chance to ever see the truth. Do I want you to follow me? No. I've told every one of you. <laughs> I'm nothing to follow. I've told... Do I want you to defend me to other people? No. Why? They either want to listen to me or they don't. If they say they want to listen to me and they don't listen to me, they're nothing but a trouble I don't need. That's why I don't pastor anymore. Because God doesn't want me under their control. Because they will come into church and they will sit down and pray against pastors the way most of the time they do. Because they're a group of women that know better than God himself. So more than likely... They are so positive that they have everything that you're not going to reach them anyway, so why bother? You know what's going to reach them? Is if God decides to have mercy on them and lead them into the truth. And that's your job to pray. That's the job that you have to say, Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. When they attack a person, and say, well, we know they're a false prophet because they're doing this and they're saying that, and they're not in an established church. How do you know? How do you know where I'm at and what I'm doing? Oh, you think God showed you? I beg to differ with you. I'm under the shadow of God's wing, and he's not going to tell you a thing about me. And you say, but God told us to try the spirits. Yes, he did. And when you see that I take money and want your money and tell you you must give to me, that's wrong. When you see that I tell you follow me and nobody else, that's wrong. I don't do none of those things. When you see that I claim to be the only one that knows anything, which I don't, all of that would be wrong. That's a false teacher. When you see that I say and tell things that expose the truth about the way things do go in some churches, well, that's not a sin. Seeing the truth and expounding it is not a sin. Knowing that something is wrong, it's not a sin. Now, if I were to put my hand on those churches and 
and try to manipulate them and force them into submission to my beliefs, to what I think and what I feel, that to me would be a sin. Because you see, I'm not a believer that I'm the only one that has the truth. And even though that one over there is nothing like me, and that one over there is nothing like me, that doesn't mean I don't have respect for that one and for that one that is preaching the gospel. That doesn't mean I might not have respect for those who take and at your money and tell you God says you must. Oh, this is the way. I don't like that kind of preaching. I've said it. There's nothing wrong with that. It's wrong. I didn't name them. If you want to put a name on them, you do it. That's your sin. That's your problem. That's not mine. What you take out of my messages and you run with it and you do your own thing. Some of you are motivated out of fear. You're literally afraid. So in that fear, you become afraid. Maybe I am doing wrong. Maybe, But you won't admit it. See, you won't admit it because you don't, you have never been taught that the best thing to do when you think maybe you are wrong and that fear touches you a little bit, run to God and ask him just like the disciples did. When he said, one of you will betray me, they all said, is it I, Lord? But you, why, you have more than they did. They only walked and talked with Jesus for three years. But you're smarter than them. You don't have to go there. You don't have to think for one minute that you could be wrong. Because you went through this, and you studied that, and you understand this, and you know all about it. Have at it. That's your life. That is between you and God. I don't know how God's leading you. I only know that God is not letting you touch my life. Oh, you might succeed in in preaching for a while. You might succeed in, in stopping people from listening to me. What is that to me? How does that hurt me? Oh, I might cry and pray for the ones that left for them to know the truth and never, ever turn their back on God. Not me, God. I might weep for them even, but I'm not weeping for them because I'm hurt because they decided to go somewhere else. Because I'm going to tell you what, I'm a firm believer. Part in peace. I won't judge and condemn you on any decision you make because you are not me and I'm not you. So why would you want to judge me because I am nothing like you? But I must fit into your mold and if I don't fit in, and this is is where a lot of false teaching has been taught. If I don't fit into that mold, if so-and-so over there doesn't fit into my mold, then he can't be of God. And that's not true. If so-and-so over there doesn't fit into my mold, she can't be of God. And that's not true. Because <laughs> who knows where they will end up in the end? Who knows what part of their life God is working with. What right do you have? And I'm not talking about touching me. But what right do you have? Well, God says that we are to discern and try the spirits. Mm, Like I said, it also says that if someone is doing good, leave them alone. Now, some of you that are very sincere and you you follow whatever you think I'm saying, whatever you believe, and that's great. But I wouldn't try to give it to anybody else. I would tell them, watch it. If they they don't want to watch it, say, hey, change the channel. 
If you don't like her, change your channel. That's fine. I don't hold it against you. I don't think badly of you. What are you doing judging people because they don't think I'm this and think I'm that? Don't do that to them. Leave them alone. Don't try to convince them. Leave them alone. Pray for them. Help them, Lord, to find the truth. Make sure, Lord God, that they're walking with Jesus Christ the way they say. Witchcraft in the church is a terrible thing because it's all according to manipulation, intimidation. Oh, oh, oh. They're, look Look at what they're doing. Look at what they're saying. Uh, oh, oh, that's, that's, uh, I don't want to eat parts of it. I'm, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Mm, 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 mm. I'm not afraid of any of you. I I'm not motivated by fear. I'm not sitting here talking to you because I'm afraid of what you'll think. I'm afraid of what you'll do. I really don't care. Because God told me, give the message. I'm laying it on your heart. He told me before I made this message, before I started, he said, when you're delivered up to the enemy, don't think about what you're going to say. I'll give it to you in the hour that you say it. Because I know that one's heart, that one's heart, and that one's heart. And if somebody doesn't like all the things you say, because you have to reach thousands of hearts, it's like picking up the Bible and this one gets something out of it, that one, and each one. Thousands and millions of people get something different out of it. Am I comparing my truth to the Bible? Oh, yes, I am. Because when it comes from the Holy Spirit, it's the rhema word of God. And he gave it to me and it's very prophetic. And it is in line to the word. And this is why I tell you, I'm not a scholar. I wasn't raised like you. There are things in my life in the past that he pulled me out of that made it impossible for me to be like you. It, it just made it literally impossible. I, because I had to go into places to get m me out of where I was. Places that you would never want to go. Places in here and in here that were so difficult to come through. And when you come along and you judge and condemn and you put your hand on it, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You can get burnt. You can get hurt. You can find yourself in the same situations that I'm talking about. That I've been through and overcome in Christ. So that I can help you overcome them. But when you're positive that God has led you to, to bring me harm. To try to destroy me. <laughs> I would be afraid to be in your shoes. Because you see, I do unto others as I would have them do unto me. I don't pick on that pastor. I don't pick on that one. I don't tell you why they're false preachers and false teachers. I tell you what a false preacher and teacher is. Now, you apply to who you think it belongs to. I didn't do that. You did. You're not careful about where you aim it. Well, you're not careful about it at all. Because if you were, you wouldn't do it so easily. But I'm very careful. Because I know. If a man is seeing souls saved, and his power or her power is limited to just so much, I leave him alone. I wouldn't suggest anybody to take my videos or me and try to shove it down the throat of anybody else and even fight with them, argue with them. The Bible's not to be debated. It's not to be fought over or argued over. There's no debate to it. That's <laughs> you see, 
in a church, I'm limited. That's This is the main reason why I do not preach in a church. I, I've done it when invited, and I've had my own, but I, I don't want that. I don't want that because I am limited. I could only reach so many people. I don't want to do that. I want to reach as many as possible for them to find Jesus Christ. How in the world could you find fault with that? How many that can find him go into the word and have a relationship with him? So I give you warnings about what witches do in church so that you can feel that when you feel something you're standing in church you're praising the lord and something comes on you like this you can literally feel it crushing you that's a witch she's trying to stop you from saying you have god that's a witch that's, you got it somewhere in your <laughs> in your church and you don't know it they may even be one of the greatest prayer warriors in the church accepted that way Some of them are in the deepest sins, and nobody sees it. Some of them are pastors, and nobody sees it. Because everybody is praising the Lord together, and that's fine. Are all churches filled with witches? No. Do all have these kinds of problems? No. I only preach and teach what to look for so it doesn't destroy you. So it doesn't harm and hurt you. Wisdom says, and it's in the word. Don't tell people about what God is doing with you, for you, to you. Don't share like that because they're going to rip you up heart if they don't have God and that's what he calls don't cast your pearls before swine give not that which is holy unto the dogs you think that you found a precious pearl and you have it's Jesus Christ and you want to give it to everybody before you even know what to do and you wind up hurt and you go, I, I just don't know what to do with them. They they won't listen to me. Well, of course they won't. I wouldn't listen to you either. When I was younger in the Lord and I had to learn certain, uh, certain things, I, I wouldn't have listened to anybody tell me. And if I heard somebody like me preaching, I don't know what I would have thought. So how could I, how could I be angry at these women? Well, I can tell you I know they're definitely working a form of witchcraft because I saw them in the spirit. I saw them believing with all their heart, God is going to show them exactly who I am and they're going (laughs) to... Now that I laugh at. Because you see, I am hid under the shadow of God's wing and he will show no man anything. I don't care if you're a man. I don't care if you're a woman. I don't care if you're a pastor. I don't care if you're a prophet. He is not going to give you my private business. So he is not going to allow you to come around me and come into my home and look into my bedroom and see what I do in my bedroom. He is not going to allow you to come into my home and see what I do in my kitchen. He's not going to allow you to come on my property to see where I go. Those are false teachings of false prophets who teach you, you can know everything about everybody's life. I told you. They might as well be psychics. They might as well be fortune tellers. When you can walk into the presence of somebody and you're positive, you know the depth of their soul, you know this, you know that, God shows you everything. The only way God is going to show me anything about you is when you attack me. Other than that, I won't know a single thing about you. Because I'll feel the attack. I'll feel what you're trying to do. I'll feel you try to come right to me and look in my face and tell me I'm not of God. 
I'll see it. And I'll just laugh. I'll see you and feel you try to deliver me up to Satan and I'll be sitting there laughing the whole time. Because you can't. You cannot deliver God unto Satan. <sighs> I don't know what else to tell you except to warn you, don't try to don't try to shove me down the throat of others and think you're doing a favor. I've said it before. I don't need your money. I don't need your support. I don't need you to protect me. I don't need you. There's a lot of people say, well, I'm praying for you, Mary, because I know there's devils out there. Sure he is, but he's not around me. I got victory over him 35, 40 years ago. I got victory over him a long time ago. When I gave my life to God and everything got covered with the blood, he understood you can't touch her. And up since then, oh, there was a lot of times I was tested. Let's see. Those of you that know so much and you don't like being told that you could be in witchcraft and you don't want to repent of it, because you think you have a power and authority you don't have. Okay, so th those of you that are like that, let's see how much of God you have when you're on your deathbed and you're suffering untold sufferings in the body, mind, and spirit where you can't even pray. Let's see if God comes and visits you and talks to you. Now, he probably and will, can, and say, and tell you, let you know, you should have never done it. This was not of me. Get ready. Get ready to hear that voice. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that fear the Lord. He, he wants you all the way. He loves you too much to let you be used by the flesh. Because see, this is just flesh. By the flesh to destroy other Christians. That is a worker of iniquity. And he is going to definitely say to you, Get away from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. He is going to deny that he ever knew you. So all you think you've built up, all these years, all the ways you've prayed, all the places you went, all the things you studied, he is going to say that to you if you are so foolish that you would dare try to hurt one of God's children. Don't be foolish. When you come around foolish people, you know you are tempted to be foolish just like them. You foolishly try to give them something they don't want. That's foolish. And they foolishly refuse. That's foolish. Don't go there. Everything I've taught here, I've taught. Keep your eyes on you and Jesus until you get the job done. You have no power and authority if you're so foolish that you think that you need to take me and spread whatever I say to anybody. Leave it alone. Let God do it. If God wants me out there, he's going to put me out there. If God wants me to reach that soul, he's going to put me right there. You think I go out there and I'm taking authority and control over this one, over that one, over the internet, over this? Thank you, Jesus. No, I am not. You think that I'm che I'm stealing this church member, that church member? No, I am not. You think I'm leading them to me and follow Mary and Lynch and you need... No, I am not. Go into the Word. Find Jesus Christ. Then learn about discernment. True discernment does not come 
from knowing and studying other books and knowing how Satan acts this way, what he does that way. That's studying Satan's. You ought to look, Satan, go go look in, in the the messages in the church to the churches. One of them it says knowing the depths of Satan. When you study Satan to find out about Satan, when you study the depths of Satan or what he will do and what he won't do, you're in the wrong pew because you should be studying God and what Jesus Christ will do and what he won't do. And when you do that, that kind of study, I'm going to tell you what, true discernment comes. You can't study and be with Jesus Christ and not have true discernment. Because true discernment comes out of the Word, and the Word is Jesus Christ. And you wouldn't have to worry about trying the spirits. Oh, there's a lot of false prophets out there. False teachings. False beliefs. I'm not their judge. I'm not here to judge them. I'm only here to bring out the truth. And if that is the kind of thing and work you're in that works manipulation to prove you've got something that you don't have, I rest my case. I'm not here to play games with you. I'm not here for for my ears to be tickled by the nice things you say about me. Although, the, hey, that's nice. I'm not here to debate the Word of God that you think, ah, you caught me. Where does it say in the Word this, this, and this? <laughs> it's, you're like, where does it say in the Word you shouldn't smoke? Where does it say in the Word you shouldn't have fornication? What, where does it say in the Word that you should not do this? Common sense tells you certain things. And Jesus is filled with common sense. Filled with it. And if you don't have any, you'll be looking in that word and common sense will come up and you'll go, I don't need that. And you'll go on. And you go, I don't need that. And God will show you another thing of common sense which is, which is in the word. And you'll go, I don't need that. What are you looking for? Well, who, what are you what are you really looking for? Who are you looking for? Oh, you're looking to prove that you're something, to prove that you know. Is is this why you study? Uh, what what do you want from God? Uh, you want to be accepted in the churches. You want people to think and know you have God. It's only one way. Only one way. Get enough of Jesus Christ in you. They'll know you got God, even if they don't like you. Even if they don't like what you say. They will not be able to get around the truth. Because you see, the truth, once it comes out, it's going to touch your life, whether you like it or not. And it'll meet you at the grave. It'll meet you in eternity. Because once the truth goes out into the air, just like that, once it is expounded, it does its job. It does not come back to God void. So, am I a pastor where I will watch over everything you think, say, and do, and stop you from doing this, and stop you from doing that, stop you from making choices that every human being makes, stop you from learning through experience what is of God and what is not of God? No. That's not my job. My job is to expound a message. And then once I say it, then it's up to him to do whatever he's going to do with you. Because I don't know you and I don't want to know you. I have enough to know me. I don't want to know anything about you. All I want to know is, is, is that you can find Jesus Christ 
and you have peace in your life and joy in your soul and you can teach your children the right way and you have peace in your marriage that's all i want how does that how is that a sin how is that a false prophet how how does all that work because I didn't do it your way, because I didn't do it the way you think I should. Like I said, I am a pastor. <laughs> I don't know how many people would pass by and tell me, calling me pastor. I didn't like it. I don't like to be called pastor. I don't even like to be called prophet, because many would say prophet and Marian. Hey, you think that shows me respect? I don't like it. I don't want a title. I said I'm a prophet because that is what God told me to do. God told me, you know, when I go into a church and I preach, I tell them, hey, you think I'm coming as a pastor, but I am not. I'm coming as a prophet because I have a message for this church. Because usually if I go into a church, I see everything. I mean everything from top to to bottom everything whether you want it or not once you invite me you see I don't go into your church and see it from top to bottom because it's none of my business but when you invite me just like some of your people when you invite me into your life and you ask me I need guidance help me find out what to do help me just I I would lead you straight to Jesus Christ and most of you that have ever called me what you know that I do that I do not lead you to me once you are out of my life you are in his hands so how is that a false prophet oh I heard one say well that's part of new age new age does not teach this new age does not know how to do this New Age does not do anything but work in witchcraft, a form of witchcraft. Understand the difference. Oh, I had this experience, and I saw this in a vision, and I saw that. But they're all living like demons and devils. But, oh, God is with me. And they're all over here living like demons and devils. But, oh, God is with me. God doesn't come to you unless you invite him in and you've denied yourself enough to let him in what's wrong with that that's what he taught pick up your cross and follow me pick up your cross deny yourself and follow me he's not telling you follow Mary and Lynch he's telling you follow Jesus Christ in the word find him Oh, I, I have to repeat the same thing over and over. Uh, you know, even Jesus said to the disciples, How long do I have to suffer you? Do you still not understand what I've been telling you? After three years, are you still in a place that you don't understand? Looks like my... I'm going to have to cut off.